hello, hello, people of God. Greetings, 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 greetings. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Bola Adomi here, pastor, prophet, teacher, apostle, kingdom preno, kingdom coach, author of the Master's Mind on Total Success. Yes, I'm an author um, a couple of times over, uh, but this is um, one of my best sellers. The Master's Mind on Total Success that you can pick up at Amazon.com. As for me, you find me at RoyalProclamations.com. RoyalProclamations.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I greet you again. I greet you. I greet you in Jesus' name. I apologize. I'm a little later than I announced. But I always tell you to give me, you know, some wiggle room. One half an hour, one hour you know, between the time I announce. Amen. Praise God. And so I welcome you. I welcome you. Let's fill the room. Let's fill the room. You know how we roll. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This is the deep end. This is the deep end. Royal Proclamations Gathering Place Online, where we're providing you with dynamic teachings, exuberant worship, energetic prayers, and prophetic insights so that you can go deeper and higher in Christ. We are no longer scratching the surface. We're proud dependers. We say sharing is caring. We are brothers, keepers. Come on now. So share, share, share. Hello. Subscribe and turn on your notifications and like like the broadcast come on come on let's do that excuse me one more second to do that one more second to do that have you done that just invite share share in your groups and you know hit the like button hello praise god invite hello and um subscribe amen amen you've done that you've done that you have done that awesome awesome come on now Praise God. Praise God. I have a very heavy word today. Um, it's heavy. It's a heavy word. It's a heavy word. People of God. Actually, I, I received it. I downloaded it yesterday and I was actually going to release it yesterday night. But I was so tired, just so tired, you know, from running up and down. <laughs> and so um, here, here we are today. It's a heavy word. Um, it's a series of word. And so I'm going to release the first one today. The one I'm releasing now is actually probably the heaviest. The subsequent ones aren't as bad. So make sure you turn on your notifications. You stay subscribed. Hello. And, um, you know, so that when I come back on, you know, um, you can you can be notified and join me for the live experience. Hashtag, there's nothing like the live experience. So, yes, I had an urgent breaking word. The Lord gave me a word and you always have to pray for me. You know, when the word is heavy like that, you know, I feel the heart of God. I feel the emotion of God, you know, and I get emotional, you know. Prophets are very passionate and emotional people, in case you didn't know. <laughs> yes, yes, and intercessors, prophetic intercessors, they carry the burden that God is carrying or the person they're interceding for is carrying. And so this is heavy, this is heavy. And so, yeah, God help me. Father, help me to deliver this word. Help me to deliver this word. Praise God. So, yeah, so it's an urgent breaking prophetic word, an update regarding what is going on, regarding this whole thing that's going on around the world, you know. And um, like I said, I'm going to release it in like three parts. I'm going to focus this one on, on, on the alert and then they focus the subsequent ones on other things, okay? There will be more teachings. Praise God. And so, yeah, yesterday, I think, yes, it was yesterday where, you know, I just had this encounter. I've been having these visitations from the Lord, you know, since we did that marathon, you know. It's just been, it's been mega. It's been mega, you know. And so, um, he said to me, he said, Bola, the time is not now. The time is short. My God, my God, my God, my God. Please hear me, people of God. Please hear me, people of God. Praise God. Praise God. Please hear me with your spiritual ears. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. 
hear me, people of God. Whew, like I said, please, I, I pray I'm not emotional. Did you hear me? The Lord said to me, Bola, you keep saying the time is now. He said, no, the time is short. My God, my God. The time is short. Now, I know the scripture that the Lord, you know, was talking to me from, okay? I know it. I know it, okay? You know, I know it. I know it's Revelation chapter 12, um, verse 12, okay? And I'm going to read it very quickly. And when you get off the line, go and read 12, um, go and read chapter 12. So 12, 12 says that... Um, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. My God, my God. So I knew the scripture that God was talking to me from. So, um, you know, that was clear to me. Um, you know, the other thing he said to me, he said, the time is short. So I knew the scripture. Number two, he said to me, the devil isn't done. My God, the devil isn't done. The devil isn't done. Okay. You are not out of the woods yet. Praise God. More apocalyptic type events are still coming. That was the second thing he told me. Very clear. Very clear. It was just very clear. I heard him like, it's like he came. It's like somebody came. You have an encounter, a visitation. He just come. Who? sorry. And he just comes to sit in your living room and you're having a conversation. That's how it is. That's almost how it was. So he said there's more coming. And number three, he said, I should tell his children to begin the house churches and neighborhood evangelism that he told them to about in January with immediate effect. My God, my God, my God. Now, that's one many of you may not be aware of it. Many of you may not be aware of the third in instruction. But all the official deep enders under the sound of my voice know what I'm talking about. All of them do. I, all of them do. And this is what happened, you know. God had been speaking to me about you know, the Acts Church, the resurgence, you know, this new apostolic leaders and wineskins and all of that. And he told me that my mandate, he gave me a game plan. My mandate was to equip them, to mentor them, to train them and release them, you know. But I, there was a game plan that I felt would take effect later, later, you know. I was thinking I would relaunch Conqueror's Academy and we will begin later. But at the end of the year, yeah. At the end of the year, when I went on my shutdown, preparing for the crossover, I came out of it with a sense of urgency, with a sense of urgency. So it was so urgent on me. And I called for a meeting immediately for the official tribe members. They can bear witness to this. OK. And, and I said, the Lord said you must start your house churches immediately. You know, he said, while I was still debating with the Lord, the Lord said they will learn on the job. He said they will learn on the job. He also said I was to go on this global activation tour and release them, you know, just release them. I've shared about that. And that's what informed my, you know, global tour going to England and going to South Africa. That's why I actually bought my ticket for you to know that I'm not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I bought my ticket on credit. Okay, I bought my ticket on credit. I was not disobedient to the vision. I mobilized the tribe. I gave them the message and I bought my ticket. Praise God. So that was an instruction he gave me for them, you know, 
it wasn't public. Even though publicly I've been sharing with you, you know, the resurgence of the Acts Church. I beg your pardon. I've been prophesying about it. I've been trying to get you out of churchianity and all of that. Okay? So those were the instructions that the Lord gave me, you know, for yesterday that in that visitation. He said, the time is short. The devil isn't done. You know, you're not out of the woods. More apocalyptic type events are coming and they must begin the house churches with immediate effect. Okay, so of course, you know, I had to break it down. You know, I had to understand. I had to muse. Okay, I know the time is short. I I uh, kind of understood what God was saying. But, you know, as the depender that I am, I had to really dig deep and make sure I was really understanding. Okay, so um, so I want to break it down to you very quickly. I'm going to be trying to be very quick so that you can understand. You know, when he was saying the time is short, okay, I'm breaking that one down to you. I believe the Lord was talking about it in two contexts, in two contexts. You know, in the first context, I feel he was referring to um, the shortness of time regarding the window of opportunity that he gave us on Thursday. Remember that um, when we're up, wrapping up the fast, I said the Lord said he has given Giving us a window of opportunity and a season refreshing, okay, the, you know, to prepare and to preach the gospel. How many of you can remember that? Hashtag yes or no, if you can remember me saying that. And so in my mind, honestly, I thought, oh, season of refreshing, you know, it's giving us a short time. We have a bit of time and so on and so forth. In my mind, I thought, you know, we have time kind of thing, you know, praise God. Praise God. And so he began to show me, he began to show me, the Lord began to say to me that, no, 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 no. <laughs> you remember that the, uh, that my scriptures say that a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. He says, so you don't have that much time. Okay, you know, this window of opportunity, this season refreshing is not such a long time as you think, you know, because I was thinking we had time. And I guess also, you know, I was in some kind of denial. You know what I mean? Because I, I just thought, you know, this can't really be happening in our time. <laughs> oh my God. It cannot possibly be happening in my own generation. You know what I mean? So I was, I guess I was in some kind Kind of denial until yesterday you know so he said yeah that he meant that and so um you know i should get my house in order and of course this time around i i knew it wasn't a joke so i have been getting my house in order now the second part of the context in which he was saying the t time is short is actually literal as in what revelation 12 12 says that is literal that the devil knows that his time is short because that's what revelation says that it is the devil who is aware of the shortness of time but so i began to muse and you know still kind of digging deep in this conversation with the lord to understand to get to the bottom get his heart you know and, and so i began to think about it and and the first question i had is is time is short for what People of God, hear this word with your spiritual ears. Hear this word with your spiritual ears. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 12, that he knows that his time is short. You know, New King James, because he knows that he has a short time, right? Short time is short for what? What is the devil aware of about his time being short? You know, because I want us to really muse on the word of God and not just scratch the surface and just, you know, gloss over scriptures. Talk to me. Let us let us discuss this. What, what, what is your understanding of that? The devil knows his time is short. Short time for what? Short time for what? Come on, come on. Let's dig deeper. Come on. Come on, dependers. Short time for what? Dig deep. Come on. Come on. Let's dig deep. deep and let's talk about it. Okay, let's discuss it quickly. He knows his time is short for what? Okay, he has a short time. The devil, the devil. I'm talking about the devil. It is the devil that the scriptures says that he knows his time is short. The devil knows his time is short. 
For what? What is his time short for? His judgment? Yes. Devil, his time is short to still kill and destroy, to get all the souls he can. Christ return, my God, my God, my God. The devil cannot repent. No, no, no. <laughs> He's doomed for the lake of fire. My God, my God, my God, my God. Many of you have hit the nail of the, on the head. It is the devil that he knows his time is short. Okay, that's what the scripture says. Please go to Revelation chapter 12 to deceive. Clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. Clap for yourself, dependence. Many of you nailed it. Many of you nailed it. Many of you nailed it. Praise God. Praise God. The devil knows his time is short for the return of Jesus. So all of you who, who said that, clap for yourself. For the return of Jesus... And the barrel of Armageddon. Mm, and the, he knows his time is short for that. Okay? You see, you see, many, okay. Many don't know these things. Many of you don't know the end times. You don't know all this eschatology. You, you're, you're totally, you know, uh, um, out, out of the loop, you know. Ignorant is the best word. And I don't blame many of you. It's because this word of faith movement that many of you came out of, you know, um, they don't teach these things. They don't teach doctrines, you know. They're just about, you know, motivating you and living your best life and prosperity. In fact, one of the pastors of one of the biggest churches in America was on Larry King once, and they asked him about the rapture, revelation, end time. He said he's not an expert in that. <laughs> These are the elements elementary doctrines it's a doctrine it's that elementary doctrine of the faith the uh, the pastor of the largest church in america does not know one of the elementary doctrines of our faith <laughs> i laughed at that time i just shook my head i said you don't deserve that pulpit you're a rookie you don't deserve it if you don't know the basic doctrine. But anyway, I'm digressing. I'm digressing. I'm digressing. This is why many of us don't know. And, and maybe, maybe, maybe this is why I'm going to, part two is going to be unveiling this end time agenda. Because there seems to be quite a lot of confusion around the subject. Anywho, let me come back. So the devil knows his time is short, you know. For the return of Jesus and, and the battle of Armageddon, he knows that his time is short to prepare the stage for the Antichrist and the world, one world government. He knows his time is short to take as many people to his ultimate destination, which is the lake of fire. You know, like where is, that's where he's going, you know, by causing them to rebel against God. He knows his time is short to carry out his ministry, which is to still kill, destroy, and, de and deceive, and deceive. So those are it. And so those of you who said that, good word, you nailed it, you nailed it, you nailed it. So he knows his time is short. So I got that clear, okay? In this, in this dialogue with the Lord, with this encounter with the Lord, he said, so I got that. He said, time is short for what? Then the Lord began to ask me, he said, what happens when the time is short or the time for an event is getting closer? Okay. Okay. So let, let, me, let me, because I want you to understand. I really want you to understand what is going on. You know, you have to understand what is going on. You have to understand the times. You have to understand the agenda. You have to understand the strategy. You really have to understand. We must not be ignorant of these times. Okay? So God began to ask me, Bola, what happens when his time is short? Let us just talk about an analogy. I'm talking naturally. I'm just talking naturally right now. So let's say you have a concert coming up. Uh, you know, a play or whatever coming up, okay? Of course, you're going to be preparing. But as the day of the um, event approaches, what begins to happen? What do you do? Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. This is just naturally. I'm not talking spiritual. 
I'm not talking spiritual. Oh, clap for yourself. Oh, intensity. Speed up. My God, my God, my God. My God, my God. You prepare. You intensify it. Your preparation goes to another level. My God, my God. Talk to me. You accelerate. You intensify. Because you know that you're not getting closer. You know the dress rehearsal. You know you start beginning the dress rehearsal i mean you know that now this time is short and your the real thing is about to happen and so man you just i mean hashtag acceleration you just put everything at top gear top speed my god my god yes or no talk to me my god my god yes you shift those gears my god my god karibo shikerebo skendi tunnel vision clap for yourself I love my dependers. You got it. So the Lord said that is exactly what happens. Okay? So when the, because the devil knows his time is short. Now, let me make you understand something about the devil and his understanding of the times, his understanding of the word of God. Do you know that the devil existed before man? Talk to me. Do you know he existed before the creation of man? Do you know that he was in heaven with God in the beginning? Do you know that he was God's number one choir master, eh? worship leader? Do you know? So he has been with God for a long time. He knows the word of God. Yes, I know he knows it out of context. He perverts it, but he knows the word. More than the average believer under the sound of my voice. He knows the word more than you. Some of you. Praise God. He tempted Jesus with the word, remember? He was caught in scripture. He knows the timing of God. He knows how God works. He knows his principles. He does. He was with God for a long time. Actually, his fall happened because he wanted God's throne. He wanted to be God. So he is more aware of the time and, you know, everything. The principle, the calendar of God than most believers. And so because he now knows that his time is short, he has intensified his efforts. Hello? He knows his time is short for Jesus to return. He knows the time is short. So he's intensifying his ministry to kill, steal, and destroy. He's unveiling his antichrist apocalyptic agenda and all of that. He's put it in acceleration mode. I gear. Talk to me. So do you understand why there is more to come. Do you understand, people of God, why there is more to come? Do you understand? And do you understand why we must start those house churches now? For the sake of those who don't understand, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. He knows his time is short. He knows his time is short. That is why. He knows he has a limited amount of time. He knows his crunch time. Praise God. Now, let me break it down to you and tell you what the Father said is coming. More to come. Because God reveals to redeem. God, God sees everything. He knows what they're planning ahead of time. A lot of these things, I told you about it. I came off my 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 28th day and as I was leaving, the Lord said, get ready for a very, emphasis on the word very, very apocalyptic march. He said, brace yourself, actually. Those were his exact words. Brace yourself. Can you remember that? And he said, especially around Purim. To a T, you can't, you can't make this stuff up. You can't make it up. To a T. Can't be that accurate except the Holy Spirit. So now he, this is what he said is coming. 
Number one, they will cut out power outages. There will be power outages. Hashtag power outages are coming. Hear this word, people of God, and please do not play with this prophetic alert. Power outages are coming. He said technological and electrical. My God, my God. What did I say? Technological and electrical. Technological means your internet. Yes, internet. And electrical, of course, you don't need an explanation for electrical. Number two, he said there will be, they will order the closure of grocery stores because they are, they, they are quote and unquote trying to, quote and unquote, contain the virus. And they will impose a curfew. What did I say? They will impose a curfew. My God, my God. That's the second thing that's coming. Or the third thing. Grocery stores will close and a curfew will be, um, will be, will be, whatever, imposed. If you don't know what all this grammar is, just do a search. A coffee is where they tell you you can't go out past a certain hour. Number four. Oh my God. This, I told you it's heavy. It's heavy. Oh, Jesus, it's heavy. It's heavy. Banks will also close. And there will be a run on the bank. People will start going to Russian to get money out of their ATMs, run on the bank. If you don't know all this terminology, just do a Google search while you can still do one. Okay? Excuse me, it's heavy. It's heavy because what I'm seeing is not looking good. Whew. And if, you, if, you are, if you've been paying attention, people of God, they already started preparing us. I don't know about you, but I've been getting... You know, my bank sending me um alert. How many of you have been getting those alerts from your banks? Banks saying that something about a way to access your money because of code device. How many of you have been getting that? They're, 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 they're programming us. They're preconditioning us. I've been getting it. How does virus affect bank? Are they telling us something? That, do they know something we don't know? My bank has been sending all these emails. The one that even was the confirmation for me today was my email service provider. I use, um, I use constant contact. Some of you may know it. If you're in business or whatever, you do have a huge, huge database, you know, you know, or MailChimp or something like that. Some of you know what I'm talking about. So, so, so people are God. They emailed me as well. Ah. <laughs> I said constant contact too. What has email and network and technology got to do with code uh, COVID-19? Do they know something we don't? That is just the confirmation. So the internet, email, not existent. My God, my God, my God, my God. My God. And so, people of God, get ready. Get ready. There are going to be interruptions with the internet. So, right now, some of you are still happy now, right? <laughs> online, online. I don't know when. I don't know for how long. But it's coming. And the Lord said it's coming sooner than later. So don't think that, ah, it's still far. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 it's coming. And there will be power outages. So no more online churches. There will be power outages, no more electricity. Even if, I don't know how many days, I don't know whatever. And so do you now see why God... Can, do you now see why the Lord said that the house churches must start immediately? Do you now see it? Is it making sense to you now? Is your understanding fruitful? Do you get it? Do you get it? 
Do you see why you must start your house church immediately? Why? Why must you start your house church immediately? If there's no internet and you can't do online church or fellowship or gatherings, if there's power failure, talk to me. What are you left with? What are you left with? The only access you will have to fellowship will be community-based. They'll be home-based. <laughs> the only way you cannot preach the gospel of the kingdom will also be local. It will have to be local. And do you know that it was persecution and hard times that even made the Acts Church operate the, the way it is. We've come to those times. I've told you. Praise God. So that is why the Lord is saying, let them start immediately. Immediately. Because that is the only access you have to fellowship and the only way you're going to be able to preach the gospel. He also said, when your home becomes a you know, a, ch a meeting place for the church. It places a mark on your home in the spirit. My God, my God, catch this word. Catch this word. Hear this word. Hear it in your, with your spirit. Don't hear it with your carnal mind. He said it will now place a mark on your home in the spirit. As an apostolic center, as quote and unquote, a military base. Ooh. And if you know anything about the army, military bases are no fly zones. My God, my God, hear this word. So you establish your home as a no fly zone. Don't forget. That Jesus said the quorum, the quorum for him to be present with us in a gathering is only two or three. Where two or three are gathered together in my name. He's not asking for a mega, you don't need a mega nest or mega mess for Jesus to show up. You don't need a building of 10 million. No, two or three. That's what his word says. My God, my God. So you don't need a whole army. Just pick your child. Pick your neighbor. Call your spouse. After a while, when you get more comfortable, knock on your door. Call the person who lives across the street. Praise God. Because we're coming to those times. Now, let me give you the prophetic instructions. Start your home group immediately. Immediately, without any further delay. Immediately. To obey his better than sacrifice. There's an urgency concerning this word. There's an urgency. You don't have as much time. We don't have as much time. And I'm not playing. I am not playing this time around. No way. I will warn you. I will let you understand that this is serious. Then I've done my job. Number two, the Lord said, excuse me, you can order tracks or get tracks and go on evangelism at least once a week to share the gospel with your neighbors. The time is short. The time is short and this gospel must be preached. Is not just the, the devil that must accelerate. We must accelerate in our mandate. Hashtag, we must accelerate in our mandate. He called it rapture readiness. Activated. If the devil is that aware and is accelerating and intensifying his efforts, why must God's remnant army be sleeping? Why must we think we have time? Why must we be like the five foolish virgins? Why? Hmm. 
Praise God. He said, go and sh share it. Share the gospel of the kingdom. If you don't know what to say, excuse me. Give them a tract. Give them a tract. Excuse me. Excuse me. He said he's at the door. Hashtag the bridegroom is at the door. Number three, prophetic instruction. He said, reach out. This one got me. I was very emotional. I was scared. I was scared and emotional. I knew the Lord wasn't playing. The Lord isn't playing. The Lord isn't playing. He said, reach out to your loved ones via email or letter, whatever. Asking them, this is the question. Are you ready for the rapture? Is where you will spend eternity sure? My God, my God. Are you ready for the rapture? Is where you will spend eternity sure? May God not ask us the blood of anybody. Can I hear your amen? May God not ask you the blood of anybody. May anybody's blood, may, not, may it not be on you. Reach out to them. Whether it's email, whether it's a letter. He said your responsibility is for them not to, whether to believe or not believe. That's not your job. You just do your own. There's some members of my family that are close. I, he laid on my heart as he was telling me that. And I had to obey. Are you ready for the rapture? Is where you spend eternity, sure. Ah, I said, God, mercy. This is serious. He said, you should write a letter or email because you know some of them, they won't listen to you. You know you've been preaching to them. They won't listen, but at least you, they'll get the email and read it. Hopefully. Number four. Oh, my God. Whew, excuse me. Mm. Your time is short. People of God, time is short. May God help us. In his kingdom, may we not be found wanting. May none of our loved ones be left behind. Can I hear amen? May none of us be left behind, nor our loved ones. None must be left behind. The great tribulation is not a joke. It is not a joke. It is not a joke. It's not. It's serious. Number four, he said, share this video that is giving this prophetic update on your social media at least three times over the next week. At least while we have internet. Number four, is it number, number five? Also on your social media platforms, the same question you ask your loved ones, at least once a day, you must pose that question to the world. Are you ready for the rapture? Is where you will spend eternity secure? Ask me, inbox me. If you need to rededicate your life or, or give your life to Jesus, inbox me. We have to use every each way possible now to reach the lost. This is part of our rapture readiness activation mode. Anyway, we must not take it for granted. We must not keep quiet. We must not be silenced. We must care enough about their soul. Praise God. Other practical ways. Now, these are practical ways to prepare. Those are more of the spiritual ways. You know, sharing the gospel of the kingdom. We've talked about other ways. You must get close to God. Intimacy. I've talked about all that. You yourself must repent. You must make sure you're right with God. And lo, you must forsake sin. So that you'll not be found wanting. We've dealt with all that in the past. Now he gave away practical ways. 
practical ways. Take as many things offline as you can. Take as many things offline as you can. Write all important information and contacts and all that. The whole school way. The whole school. Go and get a... What do we use to write a diary? Address book. A notebook. Do it the whole school. All your important information. He said write it quickly. Okay? Planners, exactly. Download your Bible and music offline. Download it offline. So that, you know, of course you can have old school Bible, but but then, you know, sometimes it's better to hear. You want to hear music, all that. Download it. Have it offline. This is serious. It's serious. Because I don't know when the outage is going to be. I don't know how long. But he wants us to be prepared. He wants us to be prepared. And he also said that many of my messages, many as many of my messages as possible, I should convert them to MP3s format and transcribe them immediately. So if there's anybody under the sound of my voice and you have that skill set, please reach out to me. Please, please. We have to make them available. MP3 are audio. People in that arena, in that industry, they know what I'm talking about. He said, get it in audio, Bola, as many as possible, and also convert um, and transcribe as many as you can. So if you have that skill set, please, I beg you, reach out to me, reach out to me. Okay, now, as far as the power, preparing for the power outages, which is... Um, which is the electrical power. Those of you who live in your homes and things like that, he said, get generators as soon as possible. Generators. Okay, but be safe. Be safe. Be careful with storing petrol and things like that. Okay, get a full tank of gas in your car. Um, and then he said, um, those of us, because I don't, I fall into this category. Maybe you don't own your home or you're out, you're going to have difficulty where you're going to store this generator. He said, get camping lights. Honestly, this was all the Lord because all of these things are not things I'm familiar with really. So I'm not making it up in my mind. It had to be God. He said, camping lights, camping so if you know anywhere we can get these things, camping things, you know, when people go on camps, they have all these gas lamps and things like that, solar things to charge your battery, solar energy, things to charge your batteries and internet, um, uh, not internet, your phone and all that. Make sure you go and invest immediately as soon as possible. That's another thing that I don't know where to get. So if you have that information, please share it with us in terms of camping and lights and things like that. Oh, someone said Walmart. Oh, I don't want to go to Walmart right now. In some of our cities, Walmart is just crazy. Long lines and everything. But before they get wind of this one, you know, maybe there are camping stores or things like that. Sports store. Okay. Home Depot. Good. Thank you. Home Depot. Places like that. Good. Thank you. Sporting goods. Amazon online. Good. Why we can still do online? Because we don't know when that will be implemented. Because once it's implemented now, they, everybody will start ordering it. They'll run out. They'll run out. So God is giving us a heads up. Hello, hashtag. God is giving us what? A heads up. Excuse me. God is giving us a heads up. Then, food and cash. It says, store as much food and water as possible. And wipes. <laughs> you know. Uh, and cash. Cash. Because of the bank run. The bank run. And this time around, I have been obedient. I've been obedient. Thank God for the small window of opportunity. I've been running around trying to shop, buy food. Fortunately for us in my city, things are not too bad yet. You know, they've run out of a lot of things in some of the grocery stores. They've just run out. 
they've run out but they still there was god really just honored his word and gave me that window of opportunity so i've been doing that you know there's still a bit i need to do you know there's still a bit i need to do but i thank god for that window of opportunity to prepare to prepare so just practical things like that go and keep some cash as much as you can um food water you know things like that and um yeah as much as you can you know um, i was saying to the lord you know what happens when we run out that's the good part of the prophetic word but i'll be bringing that later today i want to stick on the alert okay so that you can take it very seriously i don't think this is some kind of joke you need to take it very very seriously he that has an ear must hear it's, it's closer than we think it's closer than we think it's closer than we think they are not joking. The devil isn't joking. We must not joke either. If the devil isn't joking and knows his time is short, we must not joke either. We must get intense. Praise God. And then you know what the Lord began to remind me as I'm closing? How many of you can remember my prophetic word for March? In terms of the prophetic warnings and instructions, can you imagine? Prophetic warnings and instructions. What did I talk about? Did I talk about uh, uh, power outages? Can you remember me talking about power outages and air strikes? I talk about air strikes, right? So the Lord began to remind me. He said, You said there were power outages tending from wind, right? In the much prophetic word, I'm going to link it in the description section. He said, I didn't really fully understand that word. When he was talking of wind, it's not just literal wind, but the prince of the power of the air. My God, my God. I talked about power outages. I did. But I didn't know it was going to be this global and this mega and it was part of this apocalyptic plan. I also talked about air strikes. And I told the Navy and all that, the way I saw these strikes, he said it was both literal. I saw it as strikes, as in, you know, like an army strike. But I also saw it as a strike, like um, air controllers and pilots going on strike. He said that was is the travel ban, is the travel ban I was saying. You see, I want you to understand something in terms of the challenge for prophets, you know that I have, let me talk for myself as a prophet, it's always difficult for me to understand the language of heaven. That is always difficult to interpret, to understand what God is saying because he'll be showing you pictures and he'll be almost talking in a language that is not quite, you know, just everyday language like that. And you have to dig deep. <laughs> yes, parables, puzzles, you know. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you prophetic people are, are talking, know what I'm talking about. You know, it's not going to be very clear and straight to you. Praise God. And then, and, and then also the other thing that, the, that I struggle with is the timing, the timing. The timing. Yes, symbolism. It talks in symbolism. So the time is always also a struggle for me. Because sometimes, you know, the Bible says the vision is for an appointed time. Sometimes you are picking it up and you are thinking it's right away. Sometimes you think, oh, a season. You think it's, oh, down the road. <laughs> you know? So that's kind of the challenge. But because apart from my March prophetic word, he was reminding me of my 2018 purge prophecy which i'm gonna link in the description section i kept picking up um the alarm everything some of the things that are happening now i picked it up in december 2018 i thought it was for that month only i didn't know it was now praise god now some of you may have questions some of you may have questions in terms of where is this leading and some people have had may have questions is this from god or is it from the devil okay what really is going on where is it leading you know is it real is it from god is it not and um 
without getting into detail, because I'm going to come back with a teaching type um, gathering, you know, where I'm going to really unveil this end time agenda in greater detail. Um, I want to say that 70% of it is psychological. 70% of it is psychological. 30% of it is, is real, is physical in terms of this so-called virus thing. 70% is psychological. They call them psyops. You do a Google search. It's to get the masses in some way, place like that. There's actually no real, there's no virus going anywhere. Maybe they killed a few people here and there. Who do you know that has it? Who do you know that has it? Apart from the politicians who come in and the celebrities, who do you know personally very well that you can verify that is your child that has it? One case here, one case here, one celebrity coming out who are all puppets to push the agenda. Do you know anybody who has had it? The way they are saying it's so rampant, he's so this. Who do you know? 70%, the Lord was saying, is psyop, is psychological. It's to make you afraid, to hype you. 30% is physical. Where is it leading? The totalitarian government that I talked about. Setting the stage for the Antichrist, the totalitarian government, the son of perdition. I talked about it in my 218 purge video. I will link it in the description section. And they almost, people almost, I mean, some people just almost cussed me out, call me false prophet, unsubscribed. Because I know that the current president has a cult-like following. They so believe in him. And God was telling me he's number nine and all that. They said it won't happen. <laughs> oh my God, my God. I won't say more than that. I won't go into too much detail, but I'm coming back. I have to break it down. And we have to understand the agenda. And we have to understand that the only agenda that God has is for the souls of humanity. That's the only agenda he has. Why do you think he gave Jesus on the cross? His only son died on the cross, shed his blood. It's not about any government or making any God. It's about souls. It's about where they will spend eternity. He didn't make the lake of fire for any man to go. He doesn't want man to be separate from him for eternity. Don't you understand? That the Father loves man, for God so loved the world. It has nothing to do with anything else. God's plan is about souls, souls, souls. Get off all this political um, gospel, social political gospel, and get into the agenda of God and the heart of God. They wanted to make Jesus a king. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. His reign was towards the era of, of one of the Rom great, great Roman oppression. He did not come for political things. He came for souls of man. That's the only plan he has. And how is the how is the, which gospel is being preached? You know, so this whole thing is leading somewhere. When they disarm the masses, when they disarm the masses, are they going to be able to fight and issue any form of resistance? No, they won't. Praise God. And I can go on and on and on. When they impose curfews 
and all kinds of martial laws and camps and all that. And the mark of the beast and saying you can't now, you have to now come and get all these uh, vaccines and chips and things like that. What are we going to do? When the bank says the only way to get your money now, what, what are we, we don't know. So like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this whole, the end time agenda here. But do you know that 9-11 changed us forever? Is this not like a virtual 9-11? Now, in the sake of, for the, in the name of security, I travel and people start sexually, physically assaulting me. In the name of security. And we accept it. And we offer ourselves for them to do it. It would have been unheard of 40, 50 years ago in America. They would have sued they would have sued the airport authority, sued the federal government. That's an assault. Now they've changed us. They brought a new order, a new way of things. Now we even accept it. Everything the government tells you, you believe. Are they God? You believe them more than the Bible. Ouch. In the name of security, I go to the airport. I feel so angry and hurt and invaded in my privacy. They'll be touching you in all your parts. Are they telling me they can't profile the people who, who are carrying guns? They're telling you. But that's how they do it. They did that whole 9 11. Now they changed the whole America. America is changed forever. After this whole thing come out, you bring in a new thing. You go and be accepting, volunteer yourself to get all kinds of injection and things. You volunteer yourself. And I know there may be some naysayers out there. We've heard this before. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. <coughs> prepare, prepare, prepare. We heard it before. And Jesus has not come. The Lord said I should tell them that this time is different. Because of Matthew chapter 24 verse 14. Hashtag <coughs> Matthew 24 14. This time is different. And do you know what is different? In Matthew 24 14 it says this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached and then the end shall come please go and study matthew chapter 24 i've put that down out there excuse me i've told us before that um we don't know our word we don't know what's going on all kinds of prophets are talking all kinds of jargon that don't know their word they have no relationship with god they are talking their own they just prophesy from their head and their emotions. Anybody you are listening to who does not break it down from the scriptures for you, just tune them off. Deception is going to be high in these days. Deception. Three Ds, I said, will, manage, will be prominent in 2020. Deception, dissensions, and divisions. Be careful. Don't just go and be listening to anybody online. The moment they cannot establish it in the word for you, just tune them off. Don't listen to them again. Praise God. Matthew 24, go and study that. Verse 14, when Jesus was telling us about the signs of his coming, he talked about pestilences, earthquakes, and so on and so forth. Let me ask you this question. Is God the one who sent the, pest, um, the earthquakes? Is it God who, who brings the wars and the rumors of war? Is it God who brings the wars and rumors of war? Or is it us? It's, um, it's us. So, he gave all the things we must look out for. He gave all the things, the signs we must look out for. And then, he said, this, those are just the beginning he said, but this is when you know the end has come. 
verse 14. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Praise God. And then the end will come. Now the Lord said to me that the gospel of the kingdom is yet to be preached to the four corners of the earth. He said that is why the end hasn't come. Do you understand me? He said the gospel of salvation the prosperity gospel is what has been preached. Now, it doesn't mean that many did not get genuinely saved, even with that gospel, didn't get to know the Lord. Hello? But he said he cannot deny his word. Hashtag, God cannot deny his word. So, for his, the end to come, the gospel of the kingdom is what must be preached. Not just any gospel. Do you understand what I'm saying, people of God? And I was musing about it and I said, wow, God, that is true. The only person I know in my generation that preached anything Close to the kingdom, God, God, the, 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 that talked about the kingdom was the late Miles Monroe. He is the one that I know did a lot of teachings about the kingdom. But to be honest with you, I do not know whether he preached the gospel of the kingdom. I don't know. I can't speak. Because I'm not that familiar with his ministry. I wasn't that familiar with his ministry. But I know he used to do a lot of kingdom things. But think about it. What gospel have you been? Have you heard? His gospel of salvation. Gospel of give your life to Jesus. And all, it's not the gospel of the kingdom. God can't deny his word. So he said now. Now. It is going to be the gospel of the kingdom that will be preached. My God, my God, my God, catch this word. That is why he had me, he had me teach on the kingdom and kingdom age. Since the beginning of the year, I'm going to link my teachings there. Download those teachings immediately. Go ahead and listen to them. He also said he will start revealing kingdom to his end time army. Kingdom gospel. All of you in your local gatherings. He said he will start revealing it to you. And so now finally. Finally. The gospel of the kingdom is what will be preached. He said that is what makes this time different. Because he will keep his word. So he said, I am at the door. That is a sign that the end is nigh. When the gospel of the kingdom is preached. And it has begun. Hashtag, it has begun. Kingdom age is here. Hashtag, kingdom age is here. The gospel of the kingdom. This remnant army. I'm not talking for everybody. I know the masses. I know some people are going to remain and be part of that Babylonian based church system. I know that. That is not, I'm not talking to you. But I know that this new remnant, those new wine skins, those apostolic wine skins, those that are going to have those home churches, like the Acts Church, they're going to talk kingdom. They're going to talk kingdom. And God is going to give them a revelation of kingdom. And they're going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. We've come to the end of this broadcast. The Lord was saying there's some things I must change. He said the time is short. Stop saying the time is now. Hashtag the time is short. That is our hashtag. So he said, Bola, the time is short. So a lot of things that have been putting off, as far as royal proclamations is concerned, there were some things I was putting off till May. He said, no. Start now. Now. It's acceleration. You have to intensify. So please stay very close to us while we have email. <laughs> Our power. <laughs> That's how you must know your word yourself. And you must have that relationship. I don't know how long all this is going to be. Like, well, that's it. That's why I, you will hear from us. Stay subscribed. Turn on your notifications. Praise God. Um, you know, so you'll hear from us. I'm working on some things sooner. I want to bring a few more teachings and the second part of the word and one or two other things quickly. He said that uh, May is when I should travel. <laughs> that was so funny to me. But I knew I was hearing God. I was struggling. May. You know, I'm like, why? You know? Uh, you know. And then as I was coming on, do you know that they have now placed a, ba a travel ban to England and Ireland? Yeah. So that was just the confirmation. They've placed a travel ban. They have. It's getting, it's getting better. Let me just keep saying that. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's getting better. Each new day, they just accelerate. They bring something else. So yesterday, apparently, was even when the president put a ban on, um, on whatever. Domestic. No, we are now really just, I'm sorry, we're just stuck. That's why the ones that are coming, they are coming. Get your house in order. Set your house in order. It's not a joke. God reveals to redeem. It's coming. It's coming. The hour is coming. The electric city is going. They're coming after the bank. You won't get your money. I don't know how long these things will last, but it's coming. It is. So get cash, get food, get water, and start that house church in your house. Make it a no-fly zone. Because if you can't reach Queen Bola and we can't fellowship together, at least you'll be meeting in your house. It's not a joke. The bridegroom is at the door. Praise God. It's a very urgent word. Hello. I've repented. I've told you that I, I told him I've, I've taken up that mantle. I'm wearing that crown. If I perish, I perish. I'm ready. I told you that. I rededicated myself and committed myself. Praise God. Praise God. So at least I know by May. <laughs> I hope, I believe. If he said May, you'll be able to travel. So that means by May, they would have maybe completed and unveiled the agenda. But, um, but God is still on the throne. He's still going to surprise them. How he's going to do it, what he's going to do, he's going to live as quickly as he came. When that is, I do not know. But all I know is that he said, get ready, at least now. Praise God. Praise God. People are God. People are God. The bridegroom is at the door. The bridegroom is at the door. Jesus is here. The rapture is here. And when I say here, I don't mean like today, now, now. Because some people were saying that. It's a metaphor. Okay? It's a metaphor. Nobody knows the time or the date or the exact hour. But he said when the gospel of the kingdom was preached, you will see the end. We will see certain signs. Okay? So I'm not setting any dates. Did you hear me say at any dates? No certain dates. Get a grip. People are God. Excuse me. <laughs> 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 
Praise God. No certain dates. No one knows the exact date, time, or hour. Even the devil doesn't know the exact date, time, or hour. He doesn't. He only has an idea based on the word of God, based on the nature and character of God, based on being with God. He also is just, you know, <laughs> praise God. Just signs, exactly, signs. And so when we see these signs, we know it's sooner than we, are, we think. And it's high time to wake out of slumber. For your salvation draweth nigh, people of God. That's the good part of the, of the message. Our salvation draweth nigh. Salvation draws nigh. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. I'm looking forward to it. The only thing that I'm concerned about is those, I don't want anybody I love to be left behind. Don't want anybody I love to be left behind. So that is why we must intensify our efforts as believers. We must trim our lamps. Hello. We must trim our lamps. We must start preaching the gospel of the kingdom. We must set our house in order. Hashtag rapture readiness activated. Rapture readiness activated. Praise God. Rapture readiness activated. I love you. I love you. I really do. And he loves you so much more. You are clueless in terms of how much God loves you. If you are out there, you're listening to me. You have not given your life to Jesus. Today is your day of salvation. It's not a joke. This rapture thing is not a joke. Get right with Jesus or you'll be left with the devil. And those times will be so, so, so grievous. Today is your day. Repent of your sins. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you were once saved and you, 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 you fell off, rededicate yourself to him. He loves you. There's no sin you have committed he cannot forgive. All you need to is confess your sin and make up your mind that you'll not sin again. Accept him. Repent of your sin. Embrace him. Receive him into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Accept his substitutionary sacrifice on the cross for you. It was for you. And you can look forward to spending eternity in his kingdom. And you can become a kingdom citizen right now. And he can write your names in his book. And become a part of his glorious kingdom. Today's your day. I love you. He loves you so much more. He died for you on the cross. Praise God. And I love you, my brothers and sisters who are already in Christ. Let us keep on. Let us be obedient. Let us keep on keeping on. Let us take on the shield of, of our salvation and, and, and fight this good fight of faith. Our God does not fail us. He will not fail us. He doesn't fail. There was a powerful word he gave me, you know, that I'll share later. I don't know when, but I'll share it soon. Powerful in terms of nothing to fear. And some of the things we're going to be saying in these last days for the remnant. So I love you. Keep the instructions. We will type them out for you to guide you. Make sure you're obedient. You're compliant to these instructions. We'll type them out for you. Check the description section, catch up on some videos. If you are able to help us to transcribe, download, convert them, please reach out to us and um, I'll see you guys soon. Bola Adobe, royalproclamations.com. Ciao, bye.